I have one. Yes. Your costumes last season were just stunning. Right. I love the vermilion dress with the lace, for instance, and the uh, pearl uh, bracelets. And what I would like to ask is, could you please tell us a little bit about what's involved to get even one costume ready for? Oh my goodness! <laughs> I have never, and I have done some, you know, some, some period work before. Mm -hmm. And I've done some big costume people. I've never been involved in a production that um, the attention to detail in terms of the costuming and the lengths that uh, the department will go to to fulfill what they have to do is really quite extraordinary. We would go over um, long before filming begins and have an initial fitting, and that would be when um, Trisha or you know previously Terry or whoever was designing that season, once they've got their sort of their outline arc for what's going to happen. So, for example, they would know that they would need. They don't have all the scripts at that stage, or the in you know the the finer points of scenes, but they would have an idea that they would need me in. River run, you know, like inside a few days, possibly outside a few days, and that there may be travel, there might be a carriage involved in something, so they'll build in a, a coat or a wrap for that. So they're just kind of thinking in the bigger way what will she need this season? Then they'll fit me and make sure I didn't put on 40 pounds since the <laughs> year before, which I don't know the way this is going. <laughs> right? I'm practically made of gumbo at this stage. But <laughs> yeah. um, and then they and then they start the process. And they there are, I mean, undergarment after undergarment. There's a sort of a, a shift to make sure that the corset doesn't completely wreck your uh, body and skin. There's a corset. There's a bum roll. There is a petticoat over that. Then there's possibly an underskirt over that, and then the dress itself, which, depending on the complexity of the dress, might be in two parts because one whole dress would actually just be too heavy and just keel over. So <laughs> they just put they can get a skirt on first and then kind of hook the top to the bottom of it or something. It's really incredible, and the, the, I mean, nothing is unplanned. Mm -hmm. Every little ruffle, the length of every ruffle, they keep, you know, checking the period references, uh, to know it's, you know, it's two inches of a ruffle rather than four, or it, it's really, really considered, and many of the pieces of lace are antique. Uh, some of the fabric would have been and printed for uh, Terry or now Trisha Bigger. Um, it, it's really incredible. So many, many fittings. And then we'd still go in like the day before a big scene and refit just in case, you know, to see it all together and in case we had changed or it had changed or suddenly they've said, we want you 
driving the carriage yourself or something, so <laughs> get the gloves, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> something insane might happen, or, it's, or you might be in a scene where suddenly you're going to get wet or something, so they have to think about the idea of doubles or triples for a skirt, maybe, because there might be time to get it dry in between each take if it's going to get wet or, you know, that sort of thing. It's, it's really, it's, it, it's incredible. I'm so full of admiration for them. And then, of course, there are, as well as the designers, there will be something to assist, uh, co-design and assist th with them. And then there are, I mean, the wardrobe department is full of these incredible seamstresses. And I actually, I love sewing. I like, I like making things generally, like songs or, um, I mean, I've discovered that so many of you are so incredibly crafty. You all make really brilliant things, or too many people do. But I, I just admit the skill that they have. They patiently sew and embroider, and it's, it's really, it's a sight to behold. And, and you know, walls and walls of fabric, and I mean, literally, it's like it's fabric porn in there. <laughs> <laughs> who I'm not a bit sorry that the show deviated from the books mm. to keep Myrta alive. Mm -hmm. But that scene, <laughs> one minute you're throwing water. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was whiskey. Yeah. 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 And yes. the next minute, well, yes. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> do that. please tell. First of all, what was your reaction when you read the script? And second of all, just did you know that an entire universe would be swooning? And yeah, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know anything about it. As I was, I was telling people on Friday night, I wasn't. Uh, Outlander wasn't part of my world until I was offered the job, and then I watched all the seasons to catch up, and then I came to the books. Mm -hmm. Then, but. Um, so uh, I obviously wasn't expecting anything that wasn't in that book, mm -hmm. and uh, when when I when I read it, I, I couldn't believe it. And then we started filming it, and luckily the directors that we worked with on those episodes, it's I because I I come from a more of a, a sort of a live background. I love uh, rehearsal if you can get it. You don't always get it in in television or in film actually because time is very precious and it, it can cost them a lot of money. But actually, I think it's a I think it's a false economy. And if you if you give uh, actors a chance to rehearse and kind of really understand what they're doing, things move much more quickly on the set and you and you gain time that way. But you know, often there isn't the time. But these directors made time for rehearsal. And instantly, you lucky girl. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, instantly, uh, like Duncan and I just got on. And we had the same ideas about things. Uh, he's very, very cheeky, and, <laughs> uh, and, and we were going to try things. But he's such a lovely man. I mean, he really is an absolute dote, and so respectful. Constantly wanted to make sure I was comfortable, and what would what would. But at the same time, we both wanted something that was believable and, and real and, and also you know I was kind of thrilled that they introduced the idea that people you know over 50 exactly. might like my question yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah. 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 People over 50 do have sex yes. and, <laughs> and enjoy it. But I, I think I think um, you know your your expressions and and you know we didn't see as much as we've seen in other yes. you know yeah. romantic scenes on the TV show and yet you know. The, the look on your face and, and knowing that your character is, <coughs> she can't see, yeah. you know, but, but you could, I could see, we could see her feeling and 
oh, and his. Thank you. Thank you know, you. I mean, it was just, I thought it was, so, first of all, it was one of, for me, one of the biggest surprises so far. Yeah, <laughs> of course, you. yeah. But secondly, it was so beautifully acted in a moment where millions of Outlander fans are screaming, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can still I feel say. that. It, oh, uh, it was so beautiful. Matt, the, Matt Roberts, um, the um, showrunner, he did come up to me. He, he, because Joe Cast had just been, you know, developing all that season. And he said, you know, it's going to be an exciting time. She's, she is a character that, that people want to meet. And, you know, some people will, will not like her. But, a lot, but I think that they will love you and they will champion you. And I said, well, they will until they get to this episode. <laughs> and then everyone's just going to want to actually throttle me. Because, um, because that's, but in the end, I think that uh, people were so happy to see Duncan back, to see mm -hmm. Merton's character yeah. re, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that they didn't mind that it diverged from the book. They were mm -hmm. happy to go. And I think most people have accepted that it's a, uh, an adaptation that it's not right. a, a literal right. translation and it would be I mean the size and the denseness and the complexity of those novels you couldn't fill them to, you, you couldn't fill them to us. so yeah I'm glad to have been yeah part of the the unusual story but that people do seem to want to see so it's great and it's very exciting to go forward with it because nobody knows what's going to happen you know I think that's the one yeah. adaptation none of us can play that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Oh, thank you. Hi, Marie. Hi, Melanie. Um, with the scenes with Duncan beforehand, was there any sort of, um, what's the word I want to call it, screening test or something to show if you have that? Chemistry. Chemistry. No, because we were already like well into the season by the time they decided to go with that storyline. Like oh, I, really? I, I don't think that they actually decided to do that at the beginning of the of the season. That's a really good question. I mean, just so the there was no of that. chemistry test. What do they call it? Chemistry yeah, chemistry. Chemistry. They do. Okay. yeah, yeah. But, um, but it was clear. I mean, we had been working together. We've been around each other, and obviously, but um, and it was clear that we got on, but you're, who wouldn't get on with Duncan Lacroix? Like, <laughs> it's really a very funny and, and generous human being. He's lovely. Um, but I think, no, and we both obviously were cast, we were in it, so they didn't decide to do it and then, you know, pick me to join in on it. They, I think it just sort of came after a while. They just, they started to like Jocasta, I think, and, and she, as she came alive, she sort of became alive for everybody in a, in a yeah, in a different way. Okay. Thank you, that was a great question. Thank you. Everyone's just dying to know what kind of a kisser he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great hugger, I know. He's a great hugger. <laughs> yes. Hi, um, my name is Leah. I'm one of the Southern staff and acts in here uh -huh. with Melissa. And so um, we've got our booth watching right now, and I know you had a little bit of, um, first of all, trouble with your luggage, and I hope you I got it. You got yeah, I got it. Back. Thank you. Although I was kind of hoping you got to go on a shopping spree. Just small bit of shopping. Small, <laughs> small yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, for but, a day. <laughs> but my my question is, we're a pretty um, hard fan group. <laughs> a hardcore you are. fan group. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And and that can be intimidating, I would say, to to some people. And how 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 do you manage that uh, coming into such a devoted fan base and, and still um, and not feel either intimidated or overwhelmed because I'm sure if it's not something you've ever experienced before, it can be just a little bit overwhelmed. I was a little overwhelmed, I have to say. I wasn't quite prepared for it. Um, but, uh, but to be truthful, I mean, people were very welcoming and people were, I think they were a bit unsure about me. Um, but but they were looking forward to meeting Joe Casta, so they were going to give me a shot at it, you know. And um, a few people said, I even before, kind of when the casting was announced, some people knew some other work I had done, and they were like, "Oh, I'm delighted!" And actually, I you know I know what you might be able to do, so yes. I, I'm excited. And some people 
uh, nobody was nasty really, but some people said, I just, that'll never work. That, she's way <laughs> too young. But then they, you know, once they saw me in, I mean, I look like I'm 107. <laughs> 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 and no makeup. It's really, it's not much of an effort, is it? So, so they believed me when they, when, when they saw that. They're like, no, no, she does too. She can, she can look 107. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so honestly, I've had, I've had very, very, welcoming uh, from the fan base, which is good. And, and also, I think, I mean, it's, uh, it's lovely to see you here, but it is predominantly female fan base. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, but there's a, there's a certain thing, I've been in some other shows where the, um, the sort of energy maybe was uh, slightly more aggressive because it was a different, slightly different makeup of fans. But I found it very uh, supportive. Great. I'm loving the crafty stuff, as I, <laughs> as I said, and I've really enjoyed at the conventions seeing the groups of people who are friends and who met through Outlander yes, and yeah, 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 yeah. bonds and stuff. It's a very kind of, yeah, <laughs> my, yeah. your friend. Uh, did you know yeah. that you met through Outlander and I consider them my sisters? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, a, it's, a lovely, it's a lovely thing. We're all looking for human connection, aren't we? And to find our our tribe. And they're not always the people we live right beside or we some people who share the same likes and think it's important. Yeah, and, and it's uh, it's comforting and it's and it's encouraging, isn't yeah. it? To, yeah. Absolutely. I, I didn't realize who you were when I saw you in Jocasta because I didn't recognize you from that's a compliment. Mm -hmm. Thank I you. Really, and so I thought I had to see because I look like I'm 107. With that wig on, how could it possibly be me? Uh, uh, it was you know the good thing about that though, most people in in like in in acting jobs, uh, most people will want to sort of like really look their best, mm -hmm. and they you know. I just, I don't know, I gave up being vain a really long time ago in terms of acting because I just figured out that if, if that was really what I, if I just wanted to present this kind of polished version of myself, I was only going to get one kind of work mm -hmm. and it would be very boring to me. So I threw that away, that idea, just kind of exploded it and just said, I'm going to look any kind of way there is possible that's truthful to somebody and, you know, and I immediately started to get more interesting jobs when I just kind of adjusted my head a bit. But um but the happy thing is as well, like if you if you look like a total glamorous sex pot all the time on screen and then people met me in real life in the supermarket they're like, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> if you look like you're hundred and seven <laughs> and then people see you in real life they're like oh, wow. too shy. <laughs> 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 you know, it's so good. Well, I went, after I'd done my first job, I just, I went back to my band. We were making an album and we were touring. And then about a year later, a film was being made in Dublin. Um, it was with, was it in the name of the father? It was one of the ones, I think it was in the name of the father. It was in the name of the father. It's with Daniel Day-Lewis. And um, a lot of the same crew that had worked on my original job were on this job. And I said I would go up one day to set to see them because I liked them a lot. There were some really lovely people and I hadn't seen them for a year. So I went up on the set and I sort of thought, I'll hang around for 15 minutes, then we'll go, go and have lunch. I'll come up before the lunch break, hang around and we'll go and have lunch and say hello to them, that'll be lovely. And I went, excuse me, I went up and I hung around and I just stayed, I just suddenly remembered how much I had enjoyed being part of this being a tiny cog in this huge, you know, hundred strong machinery. You know, it, it's very, um, again, I, it's about that sort of human connection. There's a lot of kinetic energy from being surrounded by all those people, all working to the best of their ability and wanting to make this one thing. It's a very powerful thing to be part of. And I realized I had missed it and I went, oh God, maybe I'd like to do a bit more of that. 
So then I went to the commitments was something that I really understood. So I kind of knew why I got that job because I'd been in bands already for ages yeah. at that stage. It's all about the music and the band. And it, it wasn't my life, but it was something I really understood and was close to. And the accent is a bit more Dublin than me, but again, something I, I hear every day. Um, so I then went to classes just to see if I, I, then I was sort of going, well, maybe that's the only thing I could do. <laughs> so could I do other kinds of jobs? So I went and did some classes on my own just for about six weeks and tried all kinds of Shakespearean things and just and, and really enjoyed it and loved it. So then I said, OK, I'll, I'll try and do something else. Mm -hmm. First of all, forgive me for having the phone up like this. I'm trying to do a favor for a friend, sorry for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that friend. Oh, come here and take down these bottles in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst person here. Yeah. Yeah, I was one of those people who were overjoyed when you were cast for the part because I remember you from the Tudors. Oh. And I thought you were just phenomenal. Oh, and I kept you. saying, y'all wait, she is going to knock this out the park. Oh. Because I, that's one of my favorite series, because I'm a historical buff. Anyway, that's about me. It was good, it was good, yeah. What, were there any, was, was there anything that you learned from being on a series like The Tudors that helped you to, you know, to go into something like Outlander, which is another thing set in the past? Yeah. Well, I think one of the main things, and something I hadn't really, uh, really realized, because you, you think about it in an abstract way, but not really in a, in a physical way, but certainly on the Tudors was one of the first times I would have worn such elaborate clothing, such elaborate costumes. And I realized from that how differently it made me walk, how differently it made me move. And I mean, obviously I was thinking about Catherine of Aragon as well, so you'd kind of, you know, you, the, this definitely happens a little bit, and you sort of, you slow down, because you're expecting that people are gonna follow you, or pick up whatever you drop, or bring you with it. You know, so oh, oh, it really made me think about that, I think. The tutors really made me understand that for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then in Jocasta, it's the same. I mean, it's a lot of stuff, but obviously her physicality is, um, different again because of her sight or lack of sight and, and the moving is, is slowly more different and also her age you know that I was trying to think about those things but yeah, it, it helped me and again the clothes help you a little bit they weigh you down they slow you down and so it's yeah it's really good well I know we need to wrap this up so I wanted to wait till the end to ask the question oh can I ask and then I'll okay go ahead go on. oh no ask your question oh well I was going to because it's not really outlander related but um, I've often said there's a sound to pain and suffering. And often when bringing up the black American experience, we hear about the Irish experience. Yes. And I was wondering, do you feel that connection? And if so, does it affect you as a person? Does it affect your music? Um, how do you feel that connection when you come to the United States, especially in a place like this, in New Orleans? Look, I mean, do, do you, I wrote a song called Color Code. Do you know that? I, I um, heard part of it, and okay. that was when I first really heard Billie Holiday. Really? Yes. I wrote a song called Cur We were living in, in uh, Toronto, and you hear, obviously, a lot more news about your closest mm -hmm. neighbor than, so I was hearing a lot more of the American news than I would have at home in Ireland. Um, and it was around the time that Sandra Bland was yes. arrested and then died in jail a day later. And then I, it, it upset me so much. She was just a young, opinionated, clever woman, and she was arrested so aggressively, and then she was found dead. Now, the police settled with her family for a million and a half or something, much good <coughs> would do them, but, you know, that was me in another situation, and I, I, I started to research, and I discovered this whole um, list of unarmed black men and women who have been killed by the police in a, just a six month period in that time. And I, I, I heard the mayor of New York come out, his child is biracial, and um, he said, you know what, I, I, I have children, as I, I, I was talking about the other night, I have four sons, and he, he said, you know, when my son goes out with his friends, you know, he said, you know, they're hanging out in college or whatever, he said to him, you know, if something kicks off in the bar, you can't, the way they do. And it was such a, a stark thing to me that I really hadn't processed before.
before, I don't think you can understand if the world reacts to you a certain way every day because of the color of your skin and you have not had that experience, it's, you really, it, we really need to think about it. We really need to understand it. You can't, you can't not see it. You can't not be aware of it. And I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, well, clearly, obviously, distressing. And, uh, but I just find it interesting that often our experience, well, we, I mean, our experience is often compared. Well, we're, colo you know, we were colonized. Mm -hmm. We were, and we were oppressed. And uh, I speak Guelga. Our, I mean, our language was. Um, suppressed, we weren't allowed to educate our, our children in that language, or obviously our land was taken away, it was, you know, everything, yeah, absolutely, so you'd carry a deep DNA memory of that, certainly, which is comparable, but I don't think, I mean, we're in a different position now, and not enough change has happened here in, in, in the world, but also you see wonderful acts of generosity yes. and understanding, and so, you know, there are yeah, there are good people everywhere, and then there are also total arseholes. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we are going to oh, I thought you were going to the That's why I'm like, like you're early. Oh, okay. We're going for the okay, one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I misunderstood his, his presence. I'm in no rush. You're lovely people. I'm in the call. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Utterly traumatized. Yes. She's lost all of her children, like, and then she's been them. she's I mean, been there holding on and, and you yeah. know and trying to hold on to her material right. assets now. But then I, I think the whole idea that um, her nephew came to see her. Imagine how incredible that would have been at wow. the time. I mean, it wasn't like anybody had a phone. It wasn't like she was. Up on a plane. Yeah, on yeah a plane. They, she wasn't getting visitors on a regular <laughs> basis from. So even first of all, obviously, he's her family, her blood, and as you say, the importance of that and the connection that there is. But then even just, and I think it's the same thing when she meets Myrta as well. The idea that you, somebody's here who knows you and you have this shorthand with because you come from the same place and you have the same experiences growing up and be able to share that with somebody must have been so joyful for her. But at the same time, <laughs> she's canny yeah. and she's kind of manipulative. Yeah. She oh, does kinda. try, you know, she tries to force <laughs> him into it. She'd marry, you know, her granddaughter off to anybody who yeah. might, you know, yeah. it might end up being good for her as well as good for, you know, yes, Brianna. So uh, she's not all, it's not all totally. But she um, cares. She does care. No, I think she cares deeply. And one of the things I really liked, and I, I sort of tried to play, was, and we got a little bit of a chance to do it, was I think that sometimes if you maybe don't get things right the first time around, and because of circumstance or whatever, but the idea that she was really getting a second chance with Brianna, oh, the idea right. that your relationships with your grandchildren might be, yeah. easier or you know because you're not the hard line right. you're not the person saying constantly do your homework clean yeah. up brush your mm -hmm. teeth exactly. or whatever you're that you can have more you know a, a different relationship so I kind of felt that Brianna was really the really sort of softer or tender bit of bit of her there was no yeah there was less guile involved there or well, something like that but she had to protect that she was pregnant 
person is yes. getting married. Uh, yeah. You know, that was a big, big deal back then. Online. I don't yeah. want yeah. you to be shamed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I listened to Yes, We Will. Oh, and thanks. And saw, and I can't wait to share it with my husband because it is a week. Yeah. So we are going to climb all over you. Great. <laughs> thanks very much. I haven't had a chance, I have to say, because I, I because I was still really on European time, I've sort of been getting up at five o'clock, but I have walked all over the city, mm -hmm. and especially very early in the morning, I kind of have had it to myself, it's kind of exciting, mm -hmm. even in the lush and the rain on Friday, I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. But um, but tonight, music is in my plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. I, I'm a little bit more turned around, and we're not working tomorrow, I'm going home tomorrow, but have tonight, so good. Yeah. good. I was making food my sort of priority, <laughs> but now, now I'm yeah. stoked myself. I'm gonna yeah. have to, yeah, get some tunes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another yeah. question? No problem, no, it's not out there. I loved you were older than black. Yes. Yay. And I did not know about the, the singing part of your life until you did that one scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had the love thing with Roger Cross? That's right. Your music, is that available on iTunes? Yes, it is. I'll show you. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, everywhere. Oh, yeah. I have a website, but everywhere you listen to music, it's on, yeah, Spotify or whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, just prepare to have tissue on it. Oh, oh no. she has the voice of an angel. There's some <laughs> ones for dancing are fun as well. But there, are, there are definitely a few that will make you cry. Yeah. There have been a few I haven't been able to listen to. So oh, cheapers. Yeah. Well, the one about Sandra Bland. The reason I haven't heard the whole song is because I haven't been able to get through it. Yeah. I made a little film for that as well, a short film. So maybe watch that. You might be distracted by the by the vision. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still yeah. upsetting. But um, her family, the, where that song came from as well. Sandra Bland's family started a campaign on Twitter called "Say Her Name" mm -hmm. um, to keep her name in the press, which was the reason that it went and was properly investigated. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We gotta we gotta keep at it. Yes, it's all of our job. Could I make just one comment? that's burning inside of me because of what you said earlier. Um, when Burnt Toss says to you, come back to bed, Joe, <laughs> and you crawl across the bed to him, that made me cry. Aww. It was so tender so and so intimate. And then the gentleness with which you embraced each other, that's so often not displayed in a sexual relationship. I just thought it was just, I don't know if you two choreographed that together. We did, yeah. Oh, that was just inspired. Thank you. We were also trying to think about the fact that she can't see, but that it's her own bedroom, and she's obviously very familiar about it, mm -hmm. with it. But also that she wanted to get to him, so it wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to be too graceful, you know, I wasn't trying to like sit down and go, no, this is what, she just feel her way and it's her bed and she wants to get back to him, yeah. But again, what a lovely scene partner, you know what I mean, we both just talked about everything and we're very open about what we wanted to do and <laughs> I, I, he'll kill me now for saying this, but there's one in, in that scene, in the earlier bit of that scene, <coughs> where we're, you know, making out. Um, the, the director said, Stephen, I think Stephen was, but he said, uh, so yeah, I want, you know, her, you know, you to come back together and what would be, and Tim was like, well, I know the thing would be is if I suddenly was like trying it on again, like, you know, like 10 minutes after we just had a great shag or whatever. He's just, <laughs> he's absolutely, he was just absolutely hilarious. It was just, and we spent the whole time just like in stitches laughing when we were in between us and were. So it's just, it's it's a it's a very lovely way to work. <laughs> thank well, you. Well, you work it wonderfully. Oh, yeah. thanks a million. So, is there more? <laughs> well, I am in season five. I can tell you that one. Yeah, I'm in the next one. Yeah, and it's God. She, uh, the pasta has some pretty incredible, incredible stuff to do. Yeah, I was very lucky. I mean, it is all you want as an actor is just to get a bit of acting, you yes. know, and get a bit of stuff to say. 
um, yeah. I hope you'll you know. Speaking of that, is it hard to learn lines? Do you go through like a process to memorize them? I personally don't find it difficult. No, I, but I have this kind of. Uh, when I was a kid, well, I had this real absolute wagon of a teacher who used to make us um, learn everything by rote, mm. like huge chunks of history books, like she'd just make us learn them all up. And somehow it, it worked for me, I was able to do it. Some people in the class really couldn't, they didn't learn that way, and she, I mean, she was good as she was an absolute cow. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, I'm now thankful to her just for my bit, not for the others. Yeah. But um, I have developed this way of I can learn things and I only retain them for as long as I need them and then I dump them again. So they don't, I don't get stuck in there for ages, but I'm able to learn them reasonably, reasonably quickly and hold on to them, which is helpful because then once you, once you know them, then you can kind of play with it or actually really think what it really means. Or, mm -hmm. But I mean, so often, the, the words that you get to say are, I mean, they don't mean anything until you listen to what somebody else is saying. And then it's, most acting is reacting, really, not, you know, mm -hmm. not something you can come ready with it all learned off, but you can, you can certainly be prepared. Arriving, not knowing that with a hangover is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever do that. Would you find that, um, talking about the costumes earlier, that changes between then and now, do you appreciate women's advancement and well, I mean, because There's that absolutely no way you could get dressed if you didn't have servants. Yeah. I mean, oh, oh yeah. my God, yeah. it's just that, that that goes into it. And yeah, and yeah no, it's How absolutely ridiculous. How do you walk ridiculous. without tripping over those skirts? With, you know, with, do you have to kick with them trepidation. First? Do you like kick and walk or is it just a regular walk? To get you know because they're so long and so heavy yeah no usually i have like enough room that i wouldn't i wouldn't trip, tri trip on it and that's um, really important particularly for my character because i can't look down mm -hmm. and i can't be seen to do that it would immediately be a you know a total giveaway so um so i have to be be comfortable but sometimes i will just hold it up a little bit for for safety and i before we film i like i walk around a lot to make sure i know what I'm on and where I'm going, that I don't come across something unexpected, and you know. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah, it's only when people are very tired that that you know think. But I mean, it can happen. But no, I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. Well, we have time for a few more questions. Just give them a five-minute sign. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? I've worn you all out. <laughs> I'm not sure that you can actually answer this, but um, have you, no, Sam and um, Katrina now have producer credits. They do. Um, have you noticed any difference in how things run on the set or any difference in how things are being done as against before when they weren't producers <coughs> as against no in season five when they were? I mean, I haven't particularly noticed um, differences, but I, I mean, I think that they're the kind of people who would be invo involved anyway. You know, they're really very nice. You know, I know the way, it, like we really have a good laugh together. They're incredibly welcoming to me. Like I arrived in season four, they've already been doing that for three years and have their, you know, strong relationships with each other and with the other cast members and crew members. And they made loads of room for me. You know, they're aware of other people and what they're doing, it's not just they're not just that kind of single focus kind of person. It's it's really it's great. I mean, I think the changes probably are just the things that they would really okay. you, know, you know. I I imagine they get like a buttload of emails that they <laughs> that they weren't getting before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I think they've always been whether they had the power maybe, um, but they always certainly made suggestions about the script and about intention about the arc of the story you know they're both they're committed to what they do and they care about it and they want it to be good mm -hmm. thank you well to give us time to get our group photo um, before we go let's thank Maria so much oh, you're so yes.